Well, it's interesting to me that you got into rock music so, you know, late into your teens, because I feel like the common thing is, you know, oh, I got into it because my parents listened to it. Yeah. You know, so, you know, or my family members, whoever it was, were your parents not into that kind of thing? Or did you just not care when you were younger? Uh, not really. They, I don't remember them. I mean, now they love rock music because they like entered this world with me, especially my mom. And they kind of like, they listen to eighties stuff. So like Madonna or, or my dad, liked the police, but that was about it. They weren't listening to like hard rock. So I had no idea that this music even existed. Oh, wow. So they weren't, you, you weren't growing up listening to Motley Crue or GNR or something like that. No, no, no. Wow. no, it was Avril and, and Katy Perry and Pink and Kelly. And like, I'll be totally honest. My first concert I ever went to was Hannah Montana and the Jonas Brothers. And my dad did not want to take me, but I was just <laughs> such a huge fan. And I grew up on Disney. So Hillary Duff, stuff like that. You know, I, I think it was last week on the show, we were talking about it, that the uh, the Hannah Montana theme song is just so fucking good. I, I love that song. Oh, so good. And I, I, think Miley, I think Miley Cyrus was like the first like famous person that I ever had like a crush on when I was a kid, you know, because that was like right when I was kind of getting like into puberty and I was like, oh my God, she's so hot, <laughs> you know, but I got to tell you, her new music is so fucking good. That new album that she put out is like, Good. seriously like one of the best albums i've ever heard and i'm like a rock and metal guy these days but that album is is unbelievably good it's fine i love that it's got this 80s feel like i run to this album that's my cardio album that i listen to because it just it's it's rock but it's pop it's everything that i love and I, I think it's so cool that an artist of her caliber is bridging these two genres together and and uh making it i don't want to say cool again because rock's always been cool but like for someone like Miley to to bring rock music back to more mainstream I think is awesome yeah because it's been kind of kind of pushed out like you know the past 10 12 years or something and you know I wouldn't say she's like full-on rock you know but yeah. Yeah, she is she is kind of bringing it back uh and making it more I mean same with with MGK you know with his last album a little more rock yeah. oriented so hopefully the trend continues and rock becomes what it used to be you know so what is the school of rock thing like I you know I've I've seen I see ads for it all the time and, and I've you know heard of various people doing it but I don't know I'd always felt like uh I don't know like not that it's not legit but like I always kind of thought like eh you know, it's just kind of like a I, you know is anything going to come of it is a waste of time you know I mean what was that experience like uh school of rock it's it's catered more for kids so it's like uh and I know they have year long programs that I just did a summer camp just for fun. Cause my parents like, Oh, you know, she likes music. She's going to be bored this summer. Let's just put her in this rock summer camp and see what happens. But they kind of, the whole thing is like, you learn these cover songs with other kids. And I just did vocals. I think, I actually think they stuck me on guitar for one song and I didn't even play the guitar. So it was so terrible, <laughs> but like they kind of had to do that. And um, a lot of, kids have actually who have done school of rock have gone on to really pursue music in a serious way so I think it's really cool when you're that young and you get to experience playing a rock show with a crowd because that's not really normal and they kind of make that all possible for you when you're a kid so I loved it and it's not like a, a it's not like a you know how they have those music schools like I don't know uh, Berkeley and MI it's not so much as that it's like more of a summer camp thing but I think it's it's rad. Don't they bring out like uh, like big musicians to that, or is that something else that I'm thinking of? I think that's a uh, oh man, I think um, oh uh, the rock and roll fantasy camp. I think is actually what I'm yeah thinking. It, yeah it's a different thing, but uh, kind a little bit of the same concept. Is there anybody that you were there with that that has found success like you or? Uh, well, let me see. I mean, because this was what like ten years ago that you were there now, right, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, 10 years ago. Um, I mean, there's just been a lot of like musicians who now are in like touring bands or are really good session players. I know that uh, there is like people, who, these guys who actually played for me at one point, they joined a band called Kitten and they're doing really well. They're, they're more like alt rock, but they're like definitely doing it for real. So it's so, so cool to see that. So shortly after this, I think it was what, 2015, you were 18 years old. And that was when your first EP, Dirty Blonde, came out. Is that right? You were 18? 
And you did the, the uh, I think it was the Hottest Chicks in Hard Rock tour, the Revolver thing. Yeah. Uh, and that was like your, that was your first tour ever. Was that, is that right? Yeah, that was my first tour ever. I was like just turned 18 and it was Flyleaf, um, The Agonist, Fit for Rivals, me and Falling for Scarlet. So five band tour. It was a huge, uh, huge bill, but it was so, so much fun. I remember that tour. I'll never forget that. I don't think they, uh, they don't do that tour anymore. Um, I, I don't know. Think so. It's such a bummer. Do you think it's, it's because like of the, of the name of the tour and like the, the concept that, you know, the world that we live in today, it's, I guess that would be deemed as not as acceptable as it was, you know, five, 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, I would say, yeah. I mean, like there's always uh, that phrase, like hottest chicks and hard rock, like it can right, definitely right. be taken uh, the wrong way. And I never took it as like, Oh, you know, physically hot. I, I always took it like, uh, there's like, oh, there's a buzz going on about this artist. But yeah, I think in, in uh, 2021 times, that phrase might not be taken so well. <laughs> a little unacceptable these days, I guess. Um, I think your, your theory on that is maybe like half true. It's probably half looks and half how much of a buzz do they have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But that was the Flyleaf for the time that that was without uh, Lacey, right? That was with the what, whoever's singing for him now, right? Yeah, that was. Uh, and she was pretty new actually when we did that tour together she had just taken on the role as lead singer for flyleaf is that band even the thing anymore? i haven't heard that name in so long uh i don't know i mean i i see him like posting here and there because you know we're still connected through social media i think so so uh how did the the deal with better noise come come about when you released coming in hot on there so the deal with better noise that happened actually pretty soon after the Flyleaf tour. I went out opening for White Snake when I was 18, and an A&R from Better Noise came to the Beverly Hills show, and I didn't have music, so I kind of got signed in the old school way, like when record labels would come actually see the artist play live and then sign them just based on the live performance and not like, you know, getting certain songs shopped to them and going off of that. So they saw me at the White Snake show. Uh, signed me and put out my first record with them like I think three years later wow yeah and so you're what 21 22 at the time and I, I think one of those songs I, I can't remember which one but that hit that was like what top 15 in the in the country on the rock charts yeah wow. haunted and then bad wolves uh I guess they requested you to be on hear me now which which went to, to number one right so you're like 22 years old <laughs> and you have a you're featured on the number one song you have your own song that's that's in the top 15 I mean what's going through your head at that time I mean being so young and just kind of coming not necessarily out of nowhere but just kind of like boom you know I mean everything just kind of clicked at once I remember um it felt like a definitely like a world spin but I was just so grateful because it had been a long time coming for me even though it definitely felt like it all happened so fast in the time span of like maybe a year. And to a lot of people, it's like, who is this chick that came out of nowhere? But for me, it was like, I had been grinding since I was 15. So there was a part of me that was like, you know, finally something's happening. But I, I remember just being so excited and, and stoked and just making the most of it. Um, when you uh, when you did that song, Hear Me Now, you went on the road with Bad Wolves, but it wasn't like you weren't playing, right? You were just doing that song with them every night, right? Yeah, I did that for three months straight. Now, what's it like being on the road when you only have to, you only have to play one song, you don't have to wake up and be anywhere at a certain time. And I mean, is it just a big party all summer? Cause you, you only have like five minutes of work a day or what? Yeah, kind of, it's, it's like that. And it's funny because even though it was one song, I would still wake up and be like, oh, I'm going on stage today. And you get that like adrenaline and those and that nervous energy and you're like you're pumped all day and it's the same feeling as if you're about to play a full set and I'd go and I'd sing the one song and before I knew it's like okay you're done <laughs> and then be like I don't know seven o'clock and I'm like okay now what <laughs> and I got all this adrenaline I'm pumped I just had I just uh interact with the crowd and it's done but uh it was really fun because getting to sing hear me now like that with bad wolves was my first time ever singing on arenas and amphitheater stages so it was kind of like a training boot camp for me because then the summer 
after I revisited all those amphitheaters and arenas and I was able to play my own full set. But it was like kind of a like sneak preview. This is what it's going to be like when one day you do this. Right. Like a precursor to what was going to happen the following summer. Yeah. You know, I am curious with your all of your history with Bad Wolves, you know, and I, I, I don't want to get too into it, but I'm curious about your thoughts of, you know, everything that, that happened the past couple of months. To be honest, I actually don't know a lot of the backstory of what happened, um, but I'm I'm good friends still with the guys in Bad Wolves. Actually, like I ran into Kyle at uh, Tender Greens in Los Angeles, which is like this health food spot, and we caught up for a bit. And um, I don't know, I don't really know what happened, but I wish them all the best because they were always so rad to me on tour. Do you talk to Tommy ever or no? Uh, not really. It's been a while. It's been probably like a year or so. I haven't really um, seen them since touring happened, like with COVID. You don't right. really get to see all the people that you would normally see. So no, not really. I saw the other day, I guess he's doing like a, a solo tour or something on his own. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is something to be said about like, I think a lot of artists now are taking on that independent artist route because they're seeing like, in 2021, you can actually, when you already have your established fan base, when you've had the deal with the record label and you kind of got that first push, you get to a point where you're like, well, do I really need a label at this point? So. Well, and he's been around so long, I mean, with, with Snot and, and uh, Westfield Massacre and all that stuff. So, you know, but at this time when all this was going on, you were still in college. I've, I've heard the story. I mean, we don't need to tell the story of, of you having to leave class. I think you've told that story enough, but I am curious, did you, I know you were in college for uh, business. Did you graduate yet? So I'm actually graduating May 1st. Oh, no kidding. So just yeah. a few weeks away. Just a few weeks away. I, oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. It took me like six years instead of four to do the whole college thing. Cause I would do a semester and then I'd have a tour booked and I'd have to take a semester off and then I'd come back and I'd do a semester. And this was kind of the pattern since 20, uh, 2017 probably and uh because of this last year of no touring i was able to just kind of push through full force and just get it done so one good thing came out of this last year well i guess quickly for what it's worth in case people don't know the story you were in class right and you got a phone call to do hear me now and you had to bail in the middle of class right yeah and it's one of those things where you can't really like pause the class and be like I have to go record a song. <laughs> they like, don't even know what I'm talking about. So I, I just had to like bolt out of there and be like, I'll explain later. <laughs> did people like, did your classmates, I mean, did they know like what, what you do? Not really. I don't know if it's because in high school, I had such a hard time getting bullied over pursuing music. So when I started doing college, I kind of just kept that to myself as like a maybe a protection thing but if people were like hey you know aren't you the, the girl that I heard on the octane and blah 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 and like that's happened to me sometimes in classes or I'll get a message like hey like my sister loves your music then I'll be like yeah that's me but I don't announce it <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know the thing that's always been weird to me is you know you hear these stories of like especially like child actors right they're you know like Macaulay Culkin or something you know in this huge movie and then they go back to school and they have this horrible experience. I, I don't know if he did, but I'm just using him as an example for a child actor. But, you know, I, I think uh, and I get maybe a lot of it's jealousy. But, you know, you look at people now, everybody wants to hang out with somebody famous. And, I, you know, I, if I was in school with a kid that was, you know, in some huge movie, I'd want to be that kid's best friend. You, you know what I mean? I never understood the concept of bullying a kid that you go to school with that's famous. I mean, I'm sure jealousy is a big thing, but I, I would want to be friends with the famous kid. I think most <laughs> people, you know, feel like they'd want to, who doesn't want to be friends with the famous person? You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. And I think the other thing too is like 90% of the time when the, that person's in high school, you know, they're not quote unquote famous. Like they're still on their on the climb, on the grind. So. Right. Of course, in that stage, everyone's like, oh, yeah, right, as if. And then, like, if you start getting towards there, then they're like, hey, remember me from high school? Yeah, and you're like, fuck you, man. Yeah, yeah, you know? You're a dick. 
So uh, the the song, uh, oh, real quick about the college thing, I wanted to ask um, about your business degree. Was that is that to help your musical career so you have a little more understanding of the workings of it? Or do you have, you know, something else that's, you know, maybe not music related that you wanted to kind of explore? And that's why you're getting a degree. I think a little bit of both. I originally, I got my scholarship for music, but I figured, you know, I've, I'm doing the music already. So it, I'm like already having that in life personal experience. I don't think a music degree is necessarily gonna really enlighten me in, in terms of like the music industry. So I decided to do business because there's so much you can apply to the music industry. And like when you take a marketing class, like, oh, I can apply that to an album campaign. When you take an accounting class, oh yeah, you know, I need to know what's going off my financials. That's kind of important. Um, or reading contracts and stuff like that. And it's just to have all that knowledge in general, because, you know, maybe one day I, I say, it'd be cool to start my own record label and, and sign artists or, or do a hair dye company. So I think that's just all around really great knowledge to have for whatever you want to do. Have you uh, kind of explored anything since, since COVID, you know, with a lot more free time, you know, and, and people, myself included, you know, kind of find other things. Cause my full-time job is I work in the music industry full-time and I had to find other things to do, obviously, cause I'm an agent. There's been no fucking tours going on, you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, so I got into other things, like things I've been wanting to get into for a while that, you know, I didn't really have the time for it, You know, had, did you do anything like that the past year other than, you know, finish school? I think, uh, for me, luckily the whole, creating the album this last year took up a good chunk of my time. So I, I still was doing a lot of music related things because even though I couldn't tour, I was still writing and recording this, this last album. And then when I wasn't doing that, I was doing school. So it was very like packed, but whenever I had free time, I noticed that I really um, got into nature more because that was kind of the only thing you could do. So I was going on hikes all the time and I was like, with my dog and my family and going to the beach and I live in California and I realized like I live in such a cool place and I never did any of these things because I never thought to yeah and I discovered all these like hikes with waterfalls in Pasadena that I didn't even know existed so just cool stuff like that so the song when I'm not around uh was written by Diane Warren of course and I know you said that, you know, you wanted to record that song because you felt like this very strong connection to the song that you said you hadn't felt before with, with another song, but how did you, cause that song was never released before you released it, right? No. So how did you, uh, how did you come across the song? That song, uh, that was actually brought to me by my second A&R at Better Noise. And he said, I've, had this song for the last couple of years and I think it, this song would really fit you to, to record and and Diane Warren wrote it and and I listened to it and I was like yeah okay <laughs> let's do it and like keeping in mind also when you're with a label you don't really have like a hundred percent of a choice <laughs> when you have to record stuff it's kind of like you know we're showing you this um but we're kind of saying like we want you to do it and there's not a whole lot of no, I don't want to, or, or there's not a lot of like, what do you want when you're with a label? You kind of have to play by their rules. So, and you got her, her uh, stamp of approval on it though, right? She, she loved yeah. the song when you did it, right? No. Yeah. She, she actually really dug it. I got to meet her. Um, she was awesome. We were like taking photos. She goes, let's flip the camera off. So she's <laughs> really cool. She's got an awesome personality. Well, now that it feels like, uh, you know, COVID is kind of on its way out, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, what, what's uh, next? I mean, obviously, you got the record coming out in, in uh, just under a month, but uh, what else can we expect? Uh, I have some festivals booked for September, like knock on wood, there's no wood near me, that it actually happens. But if it does, I'm, I'd be so stoked to really play festivals again, um, touring, hopefully, in uh like 2022 and just keep writing i'm like so creative right now because of covid and i have all the time in the world to write so i probably will release new music after this album like not 
not that much late after. How much longer are you going to be in uh, Nashville before you go home to LA? Like four more days. Oh, four more days? Yeah. Uh, how long have you been out there? I've been here. Okay, this is a funny story. I've been here since the 31st, and I was originally supposed to go back to LA this last Monday, but then I sprained my ankle horrifically. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> by walking in the park sober in the middle of the day with sneakers on. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I was like, I don't really feel like traveling on crutches. And I was on crutches for the last couple of days. So I extended my trip. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, uh, Diamante, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Make sure you check out her new album, American Dream, coming out uh, May 7th. Uh, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. And we will be right back on the Crash Report. Hang on. We'll see you next time on the Crash Report. While you wait, make sure to like and subscribe to the show, damn it. Thanks for listening.